الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاض فوضا عظيما قال الله تبارك وتعالى والعصر إن الإنسان لفي قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا ينظر إلى سوركم وأموالكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صلى الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وشاهد وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah We praise Him, we seek help from Him We ask forgiveness from Him we repent to him and we seek refuge in him from our own evils and our own bad deeds anyone who is guided by allah he is indeed guided and anyone who has been left astray will find no one to guide him i bear witness that there is no god but allah the only one without any partner and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his abd and his messenger. <clears throat> All you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die not except as Muslims. All you who believe, be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and speak a straightforward word. He will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever takes Allah and his Prophet as a guide has already achieved a mighty victory. <coughs> My respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Asr that by the token of time through the ages, verily man is in loss. Except those who have faith and do righteous deeds and exhort one another to truth and patience and exhort one another to patience and constancy. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making an oath by al-asr, by the time. Some, some scholars says that asr here means the time of salat al-asr. Others says that it means time through the ages. Time is one of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All other creations are affected by time, including us. Every day we grow older, every day we come closer to our destiny, to the day of reckoning. On that day, everyone will find out through his final account and last balance sheet whether he or she is in profit or in loss. The subject of the oath is that mankind is in loss, except those who believe and do righteous deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excludes those who believe with all their hearts and do good deeds and also urge one another to truth and patience. This surah is a warning to those 
who do not listen the misguided and those who are blinded by their whims and desires that they should not waste or misuse life it is a call from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who lack faith to those who do not do good deeds and those who do not urge one another to truth and patience to wake up to avoid becoming losers before it is too late it is also a glad tiding for the believers who do good deeds who exalt righteousness and patience they will be winners and will be rewarded for their faith and their good deeds and actions the loss referred to in this surah of course has nothing to do with the material or emotional loss that we may experience in our worldly life it is not the loss of business or trade or the economic or financial loss that people suffer in their affairs of this dunya the surah is mentioning to mankind's loss on the day of judgment the day of reckoning when man will meet his rab and his creator and find out the results of his deeds and actions during his life this surah does not specify the reasons for the loss but there are many ayahs in the quran that clearly tells us which actions will lead us to loss and punishment at the end as we read in surah az-zumr where Allah Azza wa Jalla says وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ and those who reject the signs of Allah it is they who will be lost then also we read in Surah Yunus where Allah Azza wa Jalla says قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ those will be in loss who deny the meeting with Allah and refuse to receive true guidance the question is can we be saved from this loss and the answer is yes the surah provides the answer and tells us what is required for safety one needs faith complete pure and sincere faith is not a passive thing faith or iman in islamic terminology includes three things as we says if amantu billahi kama huwa bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu jami' ahkamihi iqrar bil iqrar bil lisan wa tasdiq bil qalb declaration of faith with the tongue conviction of the truth of this declaration in the heart implementation and action on the requirements of this declaration with the body and the heart the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described iman as that which is firmly rooted in the heart and confirmed by actions iman complete with all these three components and makes the believer the best of nations those who claim believe in god but reject any of the messenger of allah are not true believers we read in quran in surah al imran where allah azza wa jalla says wa man yabtaghi ghayra al islam dinan falan yuqbal min wa huwa fi al akhirati min al khasirin if anyone desires a religion other than islam never will it be accepted of him and in the in the hair after he be among those who have lost my brothers and sisters in islam faith iman should be manifested in good deeds that are consistent with the quran and sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these deeds should be should be pure and sincere and intended for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone otherwise it will be useless even a great amount of good and sincere deeds could be frustrated useless and lost on account of bad deeds done to others we must keep in mind 
that our good deeds, no matter how great they may be, are for our own benefit, our own interest, and for our own good. Allah does not need any of us or any of our actions or our deeds. Allah does not need our worship, our ibadah, and neither is He hurt by our sins. A true believer does not live for himself. Whatever good he has, especially in his moral and spiritual life, he spreads among the members of his community so, they, so that they see the truth and stand by it in patience, hope, and perseverance. A true believer is aware of his obligations towards his community and others, keen to contribute and do his best for the betterment and social welfare of his Muslim society by direct, directing and encouraging other people on the way of truth and perseverance. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we all need patience. We all need perseverance and acceptance. Without these qualities, a Muslim cannot succeed in his interactions with Allah or in his in interaction in his interaction with others. We need patience. We need perseverance to fulfill our acts of worship and all that Allah has ordered. We need patience and perseverance to avoid all temptations and all that Allah has prohibited. We need patience, my brothers and sisters. We need a perseverance to accept hardships and afflictions that we may suffer and which we can do nothing about. Sabr and shukr, patience and gratitude make everything good for the believer, no matter how, no matter what befalls him. The Prophet wasallam said, how amazing, how amazing is the affair of the believer. Everything is good for him. And that is for no one but the believer. If good time comes his way, he is thankful and that is good for him. And if hardship comes his way and he is patient and that is good for him. There are some Muslims who seem to think that their duty as Muslims begins and ends with themselves. They are unaware that they are collectively responsible for the goodness of the Muslim society as a whole. They have no commitments to their society or community. They believe that it is enough for them to be good. They care less for others. We are collectively responsible for the advancement and encouragement of goodness and the opposition of evil. We are all obliged to help and support one another. As we read in Surah Tawbah, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَلْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرُ The believers, men and women, are protector for one another. They enjoy what is just and forbid what is evil. As also we read in Surah Ma'idah, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Help one another in righteousness and piety, but help not one another in sin and transgressions. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said, if people were to ponder or contemplate on this surah, it would have been sufficient to them. Contemplate on this surah and ask yourself, Whenever you are ready, is it sufficient for you? Do you have what it takes to be a winner at the day of judgment? It is obvious, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that when we talk about worship, we talk about total willing and obedience and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this obedience and submission is the voluntary act, a free choice, we have made with a sound mind, it must have been motivated by love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We could not have begun to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without first loving Him above anything and anyone else. 
Therefore, there is no worship, there is no ibadah without obedience and submission. And there is no worship without love. Worship, ibadah is made of two elements. First, compliance. Compliance with total commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the positive and the negative. Second, the such compliance, obedience must come from a loving heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such love for Allah should be based on the awareness and recognition of His grace, bounty, kindness, mercy, beauty and perfection. This is why the Prophet وسلم, was the most loving person for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was the most knowledgeable of him. Love and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the essence of worship which is established by the commitment of faith, a, a contract which we undertook when we accept Islam as a religion, the way of life. My brothers and sisters in Islam, when we recited the kalima and bore witness that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is his messenger, once we are committed and faithful to this contract, then we must submit our life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow his message and be guided by his book and messenger. This is the foundation of our ibadah. We must know the requirements and condition of true worship. One of these required conditions that a Muslim should be aware of while performing any worship is sincerity, ikhlas. As we read in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَمَنْ كَانُ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا so whoever hopes for the meeting with his Rabb, let him work deeds of righteousness and associate none as a partner in the worship of his Rabb. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, Allah does not look at your faces, nor your wealth, but He looks at your hearts and your actions. In Allah la yandu ila suwarikum wa amwalikum, وَلَكِنْ يَضُرْ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ Also there is a hadith of Qudusi where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Azza wa Jal said I am in no need of having partners therefore whoever does an action for someone else's sake as well as mine will have that action rejected by me. Another vital condition of worship is that it is correct so that it may be accepted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our ibadah, our worship of Allah should be as He and His Messenger have commanded us. As we read, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u al-Rasoola wa la tubtilu a'malikum. Or you believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger of Allah and do not let your actions be done in vain. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, whoever does an action which we have not commanded will have it rejected. Also he said, whoever does an action in a way different from ours will have it rejected. One of the scholars says that if our deeds, our a'mal are correct but not sincere, it will not be accepted. And, and if our deeds, our a'mal are sincere but not correct, it will not be accepted until it is both sincere and correct. Sincere means that nothing but the happiness of Allah is sought. And correct means that it is in conformity with the sunnah of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Ihsan, another characteristic of our worship, our ibadah, is being aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That His knowledge is with us and He sees us and hears us. This point is called ihsan, perfection, or doing one's utmost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, الَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُوْ وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ 
the one who sees you when you stand up for the prayer and when you move amongst those who prostrate themselves. We all know the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam when he said to the messenger of Allah, Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you see him while you see him not yet. Truly, he sees you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also said, وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا So call upon him out of fear and hope. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to make dua. That, oh Allah, I ask Allah for paradise and I seek refuge in him from the fire. The ayah and the hadith clearly tells us that our worship should be in between hoping for Allah's mercy and reward and fearing his punishment. There are some important points which we must keep in mind concerning our rival. Number one, we must acknowledge, we must acknowledge that worship of Allah is the purpose of our existence. Number two, we must have absolute sincerity in fulfilling that purpose. Number three, that we must observe correctness of our ibadah by conducting it in the manner of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number four, worshipping Allah by combining love, fear and hope. And number five, maintaining ihsan, a keen awareness, excellent consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters, some people will find that their deeds and actions have been rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning into floating dust. As we read in Surah Al-Furqan, that Allah says, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا And we shall turn to whatever actions they did and turn them into scattered dust. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let us become cautious and send something forward for the day of judgment. The day when we will be in great need for good actions. That is our sincere and correct worship. Let us try, let us try to achieve the degree of ihsan by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we see him and being constantly aware that even if we don't see him, he sees us all. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ
الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور أحمده وأشكره واستغفره وأتوب إليه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه إلى يوم النشور أما بعد فيا أيها الناس اتقوا الله تعالى وأطيعوا رسوله وأمروا بالمعروف وانهوا عن المنكر فإن الله تعالى قال في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله وقال تعالى يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك إن ذلك من عزم الأمور وقال تعالى والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم قال الله تعالى قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من رأى منكم منكرا فليغيره بيده فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك أضعف الإيمان قال سيدنا علي رضي الله تعالى عن أفضل أعمالكم الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر عن أبي ذرضا رضي الله تعالى عنه قال أن تأمروا بالمعروف وتنهوا عن المنكر وإلا ليصلطن عليكم سلطانا ظالما فيا عباد الله عليكم بإقامة أوامر الله وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب فقولوا من صليب الفؤاد اللهم مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك واغفر لنا أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بضعة وكل بضعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أيها الناس وحد الله فإن التوحيد رأس الطاعات قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذوه عدوا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكونوا من أصحاب السعير يا أيها الناس اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والأرض لا إله إلا هو فأنا تؤفكون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة يبوبك وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأحياهم عثمان وقضاهم علي رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعن جميع أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعن جميع بناته الطاهرات رضي الله تعالى عنهن وعنهم أجمعين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا وسيد الشهداء حمزة وسيد الشباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين وسيدة النساء أهل الجنة فاطمة رضي الله تعالى عنها وعنهم أجمعين 
اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم كن لاخواننا في فلسطين اللهم كن لهم مؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم كن لاخواننا المرابطين في المسجد الاقصى اللهم فرج همهم اللهم انصرهم اللهم نفس قربهم اللهم دابر جرحاهم اللهم عاف مبتلاهم اللهم اشف مرضاهم اللهم ارحم موتاهم اللهم تقبل شهداءهم اللهم كن لهم عونا ونصيرا ومؤيدا وظهيرا اللهم يا منتقم يا جبار عليك بمن ظلمه عليك بعدوك وعدوه يا قوي يا عزيز منزل الكتاب مجري السحاب هادم الأحزاب احزمهم وزلزلهم وزعزعهم يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم أعد اللهم أعد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين اللهم أعد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم حرر المسجد الأقصى اللهم ارزقنا فيه صلاة قبل الممات اللهم ارزقنا فيه صلاة قبل الممات يا أرحم الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وجل وتم وهم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل الصلاة